Welcome back, friends. Sharon Katz Cooper has written us a nonfiction story. We've been talking about animals and um, the bears and frogs and things that hibernate. Um, but we used to see some monarchs in Flat Rock earlier in the year, in the spring and the summer. This is when butterflies cross the sky. And it's a story about monarch butterfly migration. They migrate. They go to someplace that's warmer because we're supposed to get snow in a couple days like we had a few days ago, and butterflies do not like the snow. So I'm going to move my chair a little closer so you're able to see pictures better and hear my words. It's a little long, so get cozy. We've got the United States right up here in Michigan, and that's Great Lakes so right there at the top. Now the arrows are bringing us down to the bottom. Monarchs like to go down to Mexico, southern Mexico. Sometimes they also go over here to the edge by California. Monarch butterflies weigh less than a dollar bill, yet every year they migrate up to 2,500 miles from the United States and southern Canada. Butterflies west of the Rocky Mountains fly to the coast of California, and butterflies east of the Rocky Mountains, where we are, fly down to Mexico. No other butterfly travels so far. Flying about 30 miles per day, monarch butterflies make the trip to Mexico in about two months. Why is this journey so important to them? Flutter, 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 flutter. The butterfly flits from flower to flower. The sun is warm over her wings. She sips nectar with her straw-like tongue and fills herself up. The sweet food will give her the energy for the long flight ahead. Fall arrives and the days get shorter. A cool breeze swishes the leaves. Now the butterfly knows it's time to head south and she cannot survive the long months of free freezing weather here. She needs a warmer winter home. So do the other monarchs. The butterfly joins hundreds of other monarchs in the sky. Air currents lift her so she doesn't have to beat her wings all the time and she saves energy by gliding. The butterfly will stop to drink nectar nectar and to rest, but she cannot rest long. She's racing the cold. Even though she's never made this journey before, her body knows the way. The butterfly's journey is dangerous. She may not find enough food to eat. She may become too tired to finish the trip. Birds and other animals may try to eat her. Bad weather may slow or stop her. She cannot fly in the rain, and she cannot fly if it gets too cold. Finally, about two months later, the butterfly reaches her winter home. The mountains of central Mexico are perfect for her. The air is cold but not quite freezing, and the butterfly can rest and save her energy throughout the winter. The butterfly settles onto a tree. Millions of other butterflies do the same. Blankets of orange and black butterflies cover the trees. The butterfly is safe for now. She spends the winter resting, clinging to the trees, and the trees protect her from the predators in bad weather. She drinks water once in a while, but she doesn't eat much. She has lots of stored energy on her journey south. Now in late February, the butterfly mates, and then it's time to find a place for her to lay eggs. There's no milkweed in the mountains of Mexico. The butterfly needs milkweed, and it's the only plant on which she will lay her eggs. So the butterfly knows she has to fly north again. Her journey isn't quite over. She has one last job to do. The butterfly leaves Mexico with millions of other monarchs, and she lays her egg, eggs on milkweed plants as she heads north. Once her eggs are laid, her long journey ends, and she passes. After a few days, the tiny hungry caterpillar hatches from each egg, and the caterpillar eats lots of milkweed. In about two weeks, they're old enough to start changing into adults, and they shed their skin and they harden into a bright green chrysalis. This change, this great changes happen on the inside. And about 10 days later, new butterflies crawl out. They'll soon fly away and search for food, a mate, and the warm summer sun. And that's the end of the story. There's a glossary with all sorts of words about chrysalises and milkweeds and things like that. So you're going to check this out in uh, Flipgrid, and I'm going to show you um, a picture of these critters actually migrating. It's pretty magical. Stay well.